using the Pythagorean Theorem, Lesson 12.1b. We can use the Pythagorean Theorem to find the length of a side of a right triangle when we know the lengths of the other two sides. As we learned in the previous video, the Pythagorean Theorem states in a right triangle, the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs is equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse. So if A and B are legs and C is the hypotenuse, we could do A squared plus B squared, and that will be equal to C squared. Now, since we're dealing with lengths, the values of A, B, and C will only be positive numbers. Here, it's telling us to find the length of the missing side. So we're missing C. We have our Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and we substitute the leg lengths into the formula. So we have 6 squared plus 8 squared is going to be equal to c squared. We multiply to simplify. 6 to the second power is 6 times 6, that's 36. 8 to the second power is 8 times 8, that's 64. Now we have 36 plus 64 is equal to c squared. Well, 36 plus 64 is 100, so we know c squared is equal to 100. We take the square of both sides of the equal sign by removing the exponent 2 from c and putting a radical sign around the 100. What's the square root of 100? Well, 10 times 10 is 100. We know that 10 is equal to c. We know C is 10 centimeters. These are given in centimeters. That must be 10 centimeters. We can find the length of an unknown leg length if we know the length of the other leg and the length of the hypotenuse. So now instead of knowing the measures of the two legs, we know one leg and the hypotenuse. We have our Pythagorean theorem. We substitute the values in of what we're given. We have 4, so that's going to be here. We'll do 4 square for the a square. We have 5, but that's the hypotenuse, so that's going to be over here on the other side of the equal sign as 5 squared. Now we simplify it. 4 times 4 is 16. We put plus b squared because that's what we're trying to find is equal to 25 because 5 times 5 is 25. Now we can use the properties of equality to subtract 16 from each side. We want to isolate b squared to one side. By taking away 16 from this side, we create a zero pair and eliminate it. And 25 minus 16 is 9. We know b squared is equal to 9. We take the square of both sides. We remove this two exponent and put a radical sign around the 9. We now have b is equal to the square root of 9. Well, 3 times 3 is 9. So the square root of 9 is 3. We know b is equal to 3 inches. It's given in inches here. We know that's 3 inches. Now, did you notice that I gave the unknown value to b? I could have used this as a. The unknown length can be set as a or b. It won't matter. We'll still get the same answer. So I'm going to make these examples slowly more difficult as we move forward. Here we have a right triangle and... We have a leg that's 5 centimeters and a leg that's 12 centimeters. We substitute the values into the formula. Now we have 5 squared plus 12 squared is equal to c squared. We simplify it. 5 times 5 is 25. 12 times 12 is 144. We add them together and get 169. We remove the 2 from the c, the 2 exponent, and put a radical sign around the 169. That's taking the square of both sides. Now we need to find the square root of 169. And 13 times 13 is equal to 169. So we know C is equal to 13. It's given in centimeters. We know C is 13 centimeters in length. Here we have a triangle. It's telling us this side is 15 feet, this side is 8 feet, and we need to find C, obviously. We put the information into the formula 15 squared plus 8 squared is equal to c squared. 15 times 15 is 225. 8 times 8 is 64. We add them together and get 289 is equal to c squared. 
We take the square of both sides by removing this two exponent from C and putting a radical sign around the 289. We need to find some number multiplied to itself that would equal 289, and 17 times 17 is equal to 289. We know C is equal to 17, and C is 17 feet long. Okay, this one's going to involve decimals. It's telling us to find the length of the missing side. We have 4 centimeters, 8 centimeters, and some unknown hypotenuse C. We do 4 squared plus 8 squared is equal to C squared. 4 times 4 is 16. 8 times 8 is 64. We add them together and get 80 is equal to C squared. We take the square root of both sides by removing this two exponent and putting a radical sign around the 80. So we need to find a number that's squared that is going to equal 80. And 9 times 9 is 81, so it's a little bit less than 9. You could use your calculator when it's dealing with decimals like this. You hit the square root button and then type in 80 equals, and it came up with 8.944 and a long decimal. We can round it off to 8.9 or 8.94 use an approximate symbol for C. So we know this length is approximately 8 and 94 hundredths centimeters. Since the square root of 81 is 9, we know this answer is reasonable. We need to identify the hypotenuse correctly as the side opposite the right angle or the longest side. So just identify the right angle. It's the square, the 90 degree angle, and the side opposite would be this one. So that is the hypotenuse. Identify the right angle. The opposite side is the hypotenuse. Opposite side is the hypotenuse. Again, the opposite side. And again, the opposite side. You need to make sure that C is the hypotenuse in your formula. A and B could be either one of the legs, but C, the hypotenuse, needs to be opposite the right angle or the longest side. We're finished with part B. We're moving on to the last part, Pythagorean Theorem in three dimensions. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and join me for the last part of the lesson. Bye.